BioX Epigenetic Part 3 of 3 until now. Research carried out has not fully explained the mechanisms involved, but data show that DNA methylation is an epigenetic mark easier to pass through generations. In plants, some germline cells are descended from somatic cells and they carry epigenetic marks, which can contribute with the heritability of epigenetic marks. The epigenetic marks are lost in the somatic cells of pollen to activate the transposons, but this RNA can be served as the precursor of siRNA production that can silence this transposon in germ cells and give rise to the next generation. Unlike mammals, Cg and Chg and DNA methylation is kept in three haploid cell types from the developing pollen. It is important to recognize that plants can sense the environmental conditions during vegetative growth and this results in epigenetic modifications in a cell lineage that can generate a germline although part of the plant's adaptation can be explained by the pre-existing genetic variation in the populations. Recent studies have shown that new stable phenotypes can be generated through epigenetic modifications after several generations staying inside the biological structure, contributing to the stability and survival of the plants in their habitat. The epigenetic regulation can cause dynamic changes, such as the plant hypersensitivity reaction HR changes in the structure of chromatin, and influence the plant phenotype, contributing to the adaptation of the plant's stress thus, the knowledge of epigenetic contributions in phenotypic plasticity and hereditable variation is important to understand and on how the natural population can adapt to different environmental conditions, especially in a world context of climate change and wrong true to type environment can we fix the cannabis industry, by the understanding of the epigenetics process. The industry can be looked at, is now equal to the tomato industry. Great agriculture technology, now with the same agriculture problems we have all seen this, with the cannabis black market. They use the same technology, same cannabis genetics, same nutrient, same protocol my friend is using it, that's how they do it and all have the same cannabis grow books growers, breeders, or consultants that say, I'm a master grower for 20 years or breeding for the number one cannabis seed company or won the cannabis cup, consultants saying about the same things nutrient companies that are utilizing traditional salts and methods tissue culture companies truly learning still off of you. Minimal experience providing an offset side of missed guided information The cannabis hemp genetic line is a nightmare. Feminized seed is going in the wrong direction throughout the past several decades. Cannabis breeders have been somewhat restricted in the types of strains they could grow. Researchers say the status of the cannabis plant has prevented the true heritage of most cannabis strains from being properly documented and passed down. With unstructured breeding, which is the current norm, particular plants were picked for some characteristic and then given a new name. Cloning mothers, not the right move. Seeds have no true data. This does not allow the true heritage of most cannabis strains to be properly documented and passed down. In both indica and sativa, there are several studies, that show there isn't much difference in any of these breeds. This is even true when comparing the calming effects of an indica and the mentally stimulating sativa. What are the true differences in dynamics that your leader providing? Okay, what does that mean? Well that's up to you and your company. We think the question is where do you want to fall, in the spectrum? Do you want to stay in a recreational food grade, or have more of a medical product? More science or less science A team from Oxford University, UK, and King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, Saudi Arabia. A new study of plants that are reproduced by cloning, has shown why cloned plants are not identical. Scientists have known for some time that clonal, regenerant organisms are not always identical, as cloning, carries relatively high frequencies of new DNA sequence mutations that were not present in the genome of the donor plant. What's cloning there is always dynamic change as you wound the plant. There's just no advantage to tissue culture over seeds for crops like tomatoes and lettuce. That small genetic variability is so minor that there's no benefit to tissue culture one superior clone. In the cannabis industry, the variance is mass and we have a clustered gene pool. Are your seed breeders staying inside the plant's dynamics? What's the environment? 
growing inside or outside, what lights, how many times have you clone how old is the plant is this a feminized seed all these dynamics come into play once you enter the tissue culture process you should start to maintain the plant's biological dynamic. You do have more consistency. Tissue culture insurance disease and pest free plant, less space. Tissue culture can still cause a dynamic change inside and outside of the lab. People have had informal breeding programs for a long time, says researchers. In a structured program, we would keep track of the lineage for years before releasing it to the public, such as where the parent plants came from and their characteristics. Most importantly the environmental aspects what needs to happen is the cannabis species needs to be brought back to its original biological dynamics, at a cellular level. Then the tissue culture process, and then once this species is stable you could go back to the traditional botany of seed to death shortly. We come into the molecular mining of harvesting chemical compounds or growing just one compound for benefiting compounds. For more information join us at BioX University of Botany. A big thank you for